Today we are going to be talking about the top 3 builds in The Witcher 3 next gen, stay tuned. What's up guys, I'm Frankie Boy. on this channel we cover everything regarding open world games like The Witcher, so stay subscribed if you want to. And as you can see, I'm here in the Toussaint DLC and we are gonna test out my top 3 builds for next gen, builds that deal the most damage, builds that are the best for farming and the best sign build in my opinion. Let's start off with the sign build at first and uh, let's see what I am picking. As for the sign build, I'm actually not picking the new Netflix armor because actually Irden, yeah, it's not that good. I did the benchmark and the Griffin armor is still better than this one because of some reasons. I will tell you when we are right in the battle. But a big part of it is that getting enemies into Irden is quite harder than standing in Irden yourself and that's an easy task. As for the gear, we are just playing the standard full Griffin armor set. Six piece bonus, nothing special. When it comes to weapon runes, we pick sign intensity. I did not do that because I'm lazy, but that's even getting some percentages more damage out of this build. Of course, Grandmaster Steel Sword, Griffin Silver Sword, it's awesome, it has sign intensity on it. As for the armor, we're picking the Griffin set as I just told you. And I actually went the extra mile to get some Veles rune stones and placed them in my sword, so we have 30% additional rune uh, sign intensity. Intensity. Of course, we're picking up the art glyph for everything, like except for the chest. So let's get that into our gear and really make it working. Also, we're picking depletion. Hitting enemies with art reduces their stamina. You could also pick like deflection. So every arrow will be deflected. This is an awesome enchantment. And I would totally recommend it if you get hit by it quite frequently. But art can also throw back, push back projectiles. So this is also very nice. And obviously we are rocking an art build, so if you're looking for the enchantment, you find that right here at the upper mill. This is Novigrad, just to the very east right here, and you need the Hearts of Stone DLC, of course. This build works very easy. We start off with Piercing Cold, you get it right here, and uh, this mutation is just awesome because it's actually working after the next-gen update, so we needed this patch, this rebalancing. Back in the normal game, it used to not work at enemies, which have a certain cold resistance and this happened after level 70. So now this is totally possible. From the sign tree we take everything regarding art and everything regarding Irden because Irden actually is our boss killer because art won't do that for us and we need some kind of reliable damage to bosses in this build to be sustainable through the whole game. And also please excuse my alert that was ringing. Let's go to the general tree and I'm equipping the Griffin school techniques to get some more stamina regeneration and also some sign intensity, 20 plus sign intensity, it's quite nice I would say. The next thing we need is focus. Adrenaline points increase sign intensity, so awesome, it's 30% sign intensity, intensity increasement, so you definitely need this and also you need adrenaline burst. Adrenaline generation is now available through casting sign. It's always a must have. As you might have seen, I'm picking Undying from the combat tree because you actually end up just standing there casting Irden and Art and you will not evade that much. Otherwise, I would have picked Fleet Footed and uh, Undying is just awesome, a perfect perk for just standing around. We also won some alchemy skill points as usual, Hate and Tolerance and also Acquire Tolerance. This is not a poison build, but we can use this to enhance our gameplay, like use decoctions, this will definitely help you out. Also synergy is quite nice to get the sign intensity up, as you see here. I picked protective coating to like be a little bit more prepared for some hits, because we are not that tanky. As you saw, we just picked up Irden in every slot, we picked up the depletion, which is not defensive, and also like sign intensity on our swords. And in total we end up with 277% sign intensity. This is quite okay, but we don't have that much life. To even further increase our damage, we are of course picking the combination of Ikimara decoction, which regenerates vitality, and then we are picking up damages increased when at maximum health. This is not a must-have with this build, because we can actually one-hit some of the enemies. 
Then you could choose between a Echidna decoction or the Ancient Lashin decoction and this is very awesome for sign builds. It's like stamina regeneration for every sign casted and the longer the fights last, the more signs you will cast, the more stamina you will get. You also get these free casts from your armor so you can spam like out all the time without having any break and it's just awesome. So why did we pick the griffin armor over the wolven armor or the forgotten wolven armor? Of course like the doubles cast is very nice you can get this via the three set bonus and cast art two times. Also Irden is increased and Irden is also our boss killer and you only need to stand in Irden to increase your sign intensity by 100% and also be more tanky. So what this ends up is like increasing our sign intensity as you now see to 377 which is a huge bonus all right so i'll show you this build in action and i just love it and right now in the next gen update it's viable for farming and also boss killing which is awesome there's also of course portion potions you should keep in mind so petri's filter is awesome because it it has like always applied science special effects which this is just awesome stamina regeneration can help you of course adrenaline point gain can help you to increase your damage and swallow if you don't have enough life i would always like prepare with this one like the p3's filter and maybe some tawny it, depending on your stamina uh, on your toxicity level of course i'm on overdose right now so i made a little mistake with that i'm casting irden i'm casting the alternative irden and right now i'm starting to cast art and as you saw i just one hit this guy i'm dealing tons of damage and i'm not even in any kind of danger this is so awesome and if I don't do anything, I don't want to do anything, I can just cast like Irden. This will also deflect some arrows, maybe get my Quen back up. And uh, yeah, my damage is even decreased because I'm at maximum toxicity. This is not recommended for you guys to do. And let's see what we can do to these guys. Prepare ourselves and cast some Quen and some Arden. Arden, this is the combination of Irden and Art, I guess. So this is really awesome and you can see how I'm blasting these guys away. They are all frozen, they are pushed down to the ground so no one can destroy the metal, obviously. Get ourselves back up and spam some, some signs to get these guys down. Maybe we can kill them with Irden. Just have fun with that. And as you can see, it does a ton of damage. It ticks them down and you don't have to do anything. Let's cast alternative Irden. No, it didn't work out because it lasts a long time so that it actually appears. And alternative art is like perfect when you're surrounded by guys. Otherwise, you can, of course, use the normal one and just shoot at guys. I totally love this build. It's quite overpowered, I guess. And it's not the strongest build in the game, but one of the most, I think, OP in the wise that you have crowd control. And and you're also killing all these guys with, with ease. Also have the ability to kill bosses with Arden, with Irden. And of course, like using some normal hits <laughs> can also kill guys. All right, let's move on to build number two. And for that, I will switch it to daytime because we're actually not casting signs then. Moving on to build number two. And we actually do have two options right here. Either picking the legendary earth sign armor for more tankiness or picking the feline armor for more strong attacks. And it's kind of depending on your playstyle and what you want. Both can lead you to the win, that's for sure. So the thing is, we just pick up the chest, but you have to be careful because you actually want to pick the legendary woven trousers. They have attack power on them. So this is like one of the strongest pair of pants you can find comparing that to the feline pants they have 1% less. So you really want to choose if you want to go the extra mile and do these strong attacks to actually complement your build or otherwise these would be better for you. Doesn't matter. An al alternative pick is of course the Manticore set so you get more toxicity. So you have in total three options but I would recommend just sticking to this one. Also picking the Nilfgaardian Gauntlets, Gauntlets is crucial because you have 50% critical hit damage bonus. These are found in the House of Respite and you can get in there by wearing a Nilfgaardian outfit. One Nilfgaardian outfit you can get is for example right after the tutorial when you go to the Royal Palace in Visima and you can actually pick all the three of them and get into the House of Respite with that. So you can see this is no clear best 
because you have to somehow balance it on if you want to be more tough, deal more damage and you can play with certain amount of sets. They will somehow all work like Manticore, Earth Sign, Cat Armor, also picking the Wolven Trousers or the Nilfgaardian Gauntlets. You have to think about what you want to do. As for weapons, there is such a best build because the two weapons are simply the best weapons in the game. And of course, this is Arendite, the best silver sword in the game. And of course, the Toussaint's Knight Steel Sword, the best steel sword in the game. And Arendite is still the best because of its perk. Many people think like, okay, other silver swords have crit damage on it but you can up get up to 100% more damage with Arendite so you need to cast 10 blows that's for sure but then you will be right overpowered. Where do you get the Toussaint's Knight Steel Sword? In the Toussaint DLC of course and you go over there in the Artach Palace ruins and you loot this right here. I also made a video about it. Arendite's quest is started right here so you might be able to get it. It's a quest that you can fail before you even start it so be careful about that. All right as for the crossbow of course Geralt of Rivia's crossbow as usual and let's switch up this potion uh, Thunderbolt for Petris. All right let's build this build together. We start off with euphoria the classic it's still overpowered in this new game in the next gen update and we pick our classic perks first so we start off with hate and tolerance we go over to acquired tolerance you could pick protective coating if you want to if you like take a lot of damage otherwise i would totally recommend like doing some picking some damage perks which would be these of course synergy is a must to increase your mutagens then you go for killing spree because it actually grants you 100% crit chance and you go for hunter instinct this increases your hit damage your critical hit damage by 100% so this complements each other like perfectly as for the general tree you might want to pick up cat school techniques or not depending on your build and uh, what you're going for metabolic control is a must have in this tree i would say you could pick tech cat school techniques if you do so you should again now switch up the trousers so you see it is back and forth like building a build is not 100% like correctness but it's about what you want and what you need for your build and of course as for enchantments the same thing goes invigoration yeah that deals a ton of damage but severance increases the range so you have to like somehow balance what you want to be going for when it comes to combat skill tree you can choose quite a lot of perks this is my recommendation i guess like pick all the free in the lighter attacks we want to use the whirl also you could pick fleet footed or pick undying you can pick both but you don't need both to be honest must have is deadly precision because you will like one hit enemies at some point every 15 seconds and this can add up up to a six percent chance and when you whirl around you will likely one hit any enemy at some point resolve is always a must-have to keep the adrenaline and razor focus is like instantly gaining an adrenaline point this is so useful for regeneration and production of the points what you could pick up when you wanted to is like exploding shield quen pushes opponents backs to give you some more toughness and some resistance but i would say like go with one more of these alchemy me trades and you're good to go so as i said before there are so many variations of this build and you can build it in many ways this is a classic farming build but what you always want is like a kimara decoction to regenerate vitality when dealing damage increasing your damage dealt when at maximum vitality and you might want to go with a kidna decoction depending on your toxicity level and you don't want to exceed the threshold of 80 percent this is crucial to not be getting any damage i would recommend like using the severance and time on the weapon invigoration is more for like a pure damage build since i'm lazy i will just keep this enchantment and deal some more damage but have a decreased range this is not recommended so we're starting off with thunderbolt of course like picking tawny and mario forest and as you can see my toxicity level is right now almost reached so i have to be very careful and uh, we use light attacks we want to generate some adrenaline and if we reach the maximum adrenaline you can see i'm easily one hitting the these guys like dealing tons of damage but also um, being very squishy we can whirl around and this is where the true potential of this build lies like using Quen beforehand and uh, then going into the fight and casting the whirl and since there are no enemies left I have to reset this farm spot right now I'm at the Mont Crane castle by the way and you can go into this cellar and you will find a portal so you can use that to reset the farm spot and go back through the portal again very
very easy way. You don't need to rebuff decoctions, potions, etc. It's just awesome to keep on farming. All right, and also casting whirl is like very awesome with the servants on it. But right now I'm dealing a little bit more damage, which is quite nice also. Let's get this guy here stunned with Axie and one hit him. And it's very overpowered. As you can see, I'm still one hitting enemies with heavy attacks even though I didn't skill any of these and uh, the light attacks and the whirl also is very awesome like with a decreased range it's not that nice but still an awesome build it's so much fun to like be farming with this build and leveling up you have to be careful though with the decreased range and the pikes is it called pikes in English in Germany we call it pikeniere von der Pike auf gelernt. That's what I would say. All right, and let's finish this off after this guy was finished with the next or the last build. Flutch, easy kill, easy life. Presented by Frankie Boy. Your Witcher channel. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Okay, and right now we're rocking one of the strongest builds in the game. What we, did we switch up? Like almost nothing. We kept the Toussaint's Knight Steel Sword. And for this one, Invigoration can be very useful because we have the maximum damage possible. Also, Aaron died, of course. You could even use Invigoration. Severance is also available and also viable because increased range on Rend is awesome. Rend is our main source of damage in this one. Right now, we we are kicking the Mantico armor to increase our toxicity level even further and have some critical hit damage bonus on it. Same goes for the gauntlets, but uh, we are just keeping the Nilf Guardians. We're not using like the five toxicity level that they would grant in the Mantico version because it's not enough damage that equals to like I think 3.5% more damage. As for the legs, we can pick the Mantico trousers with five toxicity. Critical hit chance is not needed to be honest. What we would pick instead is like Wolven Trousers for some more attack power if we want to. This equals in some more damage and uh, doing the benchmark proves that. So you can switch it up but having to farm a lot of sets is quite a lot of work and I can see why some of you guys just want like Manticore and there you go. Let's start this. As for ranged weapon, of course, Geralt of Rivia's crossbow. And we're still sticking to the same decoctions as before. Akimara, Water Hag, of course. You might want to choose Echidna or some more potions. For this one, Thunderbolt is, of course, very, very nice for increased attack power. And for the build, we didn't switch up too much. What we use is the cat school techniques. We're having an enchantment, so everything is light armor on our chest. We're having the metabolic control as usual. Then heading over to the alchemy tree, hate and tolerance, acquired tolerance. Protective coating can be picked. It's not increasing our damage though. Synergy is awesome and killing spree for 100% increased crit chance and we have the hunter instinct for 100% increased critical hit damage. As for the combat tree we are taking everything in this right here so the hard attack, strong attacks. What we want to go for is rend. On PC you cast rend like with shift left click. This is like a strong attack but also a charged one. Deadly precision is always nice like a one hit kill and we want to pick resolve, undying and razor focus. I'm not picking fleet footed because we will actually take some hits and we want to cast rend so this is not very easily possible. As usual we got some attack power here and let's start with this build right now and yeah hopefully be hitting some enemies with one hit. Always remember to keep your toxicity level below 80%. This was one of my biggest mistakes in the next gen update and if you want to check where your potions are you can like use this menu and you can see them down here. I will get a swallow and I'm almost at 80% so I need to be careful about that. So what you want to do is always like target these guys and then cast rend charge. Rums 40k pretty easy you can deal up to 100,000 damage with this build it's no problem but you need to have three adrenaline points ready so this will take a while to yeah get these up and then cast rend and it will actually consume some uh, adrenaline so you need to charge it up before and uh, yeah you can do so by using the heart attacks they also do a lot of damage and if you like collected all these adrenaline points you will easily one hit some of these enemies like let's get some adrenaline first it's quite hard to get that because this build is actually not recommended for farming it's like a boss killer build you can see you can easily one hit these guys but it's quite hard to farm some adrenaline and yeah there's actually no crowd control so it's recommended to use like some northern wind i guess and you can target these guys and then hit them and then do one hitting so this is what I would go for 
with this build you kind of lack all the crowd control you can use art and and the uh, frost bombs they can help you out a bit i guess <laughs> So, as you can see, this build is quite overpowered, but it lacks some movement, speed, and some crowd control. It's it's a pity and not the perfect build for every situation, but it is actually the strongest build and uh, quite interesting to use it. And B1 hitting guys is always fun, like totally recommended to, to tr at least try it out. As you can see, I did like 40k with ease. This was the first hit. I didn't even have an adrenaline point there, but it's not so nice when you go to enemy crowds and are surrounded by dogs, etc. That's not the situation. This build would fit. A build what would always fit is like the art build with co combination with Irden and also the whirlwind can be used against bosses so this is like one of the best builds I guess and uh, as you can see I'm getting a ton of damage by these enemies and I actually need to have 100% life to deal damage. This is kind of crucial. Alright guys these were my top three builds for the Witcher next gen. I hope I could help you guys out and you're having a great time with the Witcher. Stay subscribed for more Witcher build videos Hogwarts Legacy content and Assassin's Creed and I hope to be seeing you in the next one goodbye and have a great day also um, check out my song Heiss with Igni it's uh, a German song about Geralt being hot using Igni it's in the intro outcut uh, yeah,